Howdy scouts and scouters. Welcome to Camp Quarantine. My name is Mr. Bill Hayfler and I'm the Troop Committee Chair for Scouts BSA Troop 303 in South Hadley, Massachusetts. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the care, the cleaning, and the recovery of your favorite cast iron camp cookware. I'll be covering not only the basics, but also some of my favorite tips and tricks for keeping your cast iron cookware in the best camping shape. So in a moment, let's get started. So before we get started, there's a number of things that I like to keep in my chuck box, my camp kitchen, or the patrol box, just to make sure we have everything we need when we're working with our cast iron. Now you'll see a variety of things here, and first and foremost, you might notice various types of gloves. My personal favorite are these insulated leather gloves. You can tell they're well used. They do a very good job of keeping your hands protected. You might also decide you want to use a padded and insulated welding glove. They're easy to find, not very expensive, and give you the added benefit of a high collar. You could also consider using simply a pair of regular leather work gloves. These happen to be insulated, so there's some additional padding. And those, again, seem to be well used. They do come in handy anytime you're handling cast iron or the coal and fire that we use with our cast iron. And of course, probably the least favorite, but still effective, is a simple pair of grill mitts. These are the sort of mitts that you might find easily at your local hardware store or big box uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. We also have a couple of gadgets that are, in my opinion, essential. We have a lid lift used for lifting the lid off of a Dutch oven. And then we have a lid rest. Now the lid rest is used to keep your Dutch oven lid off of the dirt and the ground when you're taking the lid off. You need some place to set it so you can stir or mix or add to your Dutch oven. You'll also notice paper towels. When we're cleaning our Dutch oven, paper towels are essential. I happen to prefer the brown paper towels. Um, these tend to leave less lint when I am cleaning my Dutch oven. Then of course the regular paper towels and I always suggest the select size so you can use smaller ones instead of the giant jumbo. Now you'll also notice here that in addition to the lid lift and the lid rest I have a standard Leatherman type multi-tool. The pliers on the multi-tool will come in handy as well especially if you don't have a proper lid lift or lid rest. A multi-tool can also be used to help stabilize when you're trying to pour or otherwise drain. We'll touch more on that later. And of course when we're cleaning not only do we have uh, to consider scraping out whatever is in our Dutch oven or in our skillet, but we'll need to ultimately scrub. Now this is a standard green scrubby uh, 3M Scotch-Brite. Anything similar will work. We do have the coarse one here. It has more abrasives and tends to work very well, especially with those baked on things we tend to find in our scout cooking. You'll also notice that I've cut them into smaller pieces. I like to use a smaller piece, that way if it becomes overly soiled, I have no issues just throwing it out and starting with another piece if needed. If I start with the big piece as a whole and it gets soiled, it becomes much more difficult to simply toss it away. We'll go through our green scrubbies too fast that way. Smaller piece, when you're all done with it, toss it out, you still have a lot left. I also have cooking oil. I always keep cooking oil in my chuck box, in my camp kitchen. And this happens to be simply about a three or four ounce Nalgene uh, type bottle. It does have a good seal so it does not leak. That becomes important when you're dealing with cooking oil. This bottle here holds a little bit more. It's actually 250 milliliters. You notice I wrote oil on it. And this is actually a sterile water bottle. I got that from one of my friends who is an EMT. Um, occasionally the sterile water does expire. Uh, the EMTs and the paramedics um, cannot use it on a patient after it's expired. If they have some expired ones, perhaps they'll donate them to you. You can dump the water out and it makes an excellent vessel for holding your oil. And of course, you can't have any successful or complete cleanup for your cast iron unless you have fresh water. I have my fresh water jug there a bucket or sump. This is important. We don't want to simply dump all of our refuse water on the ground in our camp 
and a bag or something similar to put your trash in. I assure you, you will generate a little bit of trash, you will generate some dirty water, and having fresh water supply is crucial. It should be worth noting that any time we're doing any cooking um, on the ground, outdoors, or in this case, uh, on my back deck, um, or even the parking lot at your charter organization, it's important to do a couple of things, and uh, one of them is to protect the surface. You'll see here, this is a barrel lid. Now the barrel lid happens to be resting on three bricks, just plain old bricks. I'm sure you have them lying around, someone does, or you can pick those up again at uh, your favorite hardware or garden supply store. And the steel barrel lid rests on top. It provides the distance and the insulation necessary to keep from burning the surface you're working on. If it's a parking lot, you don't want to scar the parking lot. If it's my back deck, I don't want to scar or burn my deck. I can place any number of charcoal briquettes, coals right on top, and then I can place my Dutch oven right on top of that. So we have a level and stable surface to work on. It does protect the uh, lower surface that we're working on. And this also comes in very handy during cold weather and winter campouts. I can't tell you how many times we've had uh, difficulties where a scout will place coals uh, directly on the ground on top of ice or on the snow. And needless to say, it doesn't do a very good job of putting heat where you want it into your cast iron. Instead, it tends to uh, melt and uh, disappear into the dirt. So the barrel lid gives you a level surface, it gives you a clean surface, it keeps you up off the snow and uh, out of the ice and the mud and comes in uh, very handy. So you'll see us using this as a surface even though we're not actually going to have coals on it today. So hey, let's get started. Now we've got a basic 12 inch camp oven. You'll notice the camp oven has a nice lip around the top. It keeps the coals on top, so if you're using top heat, it keeps it uh, in good shape. Also, you'll notice that the camp oven has legs. So the legs keep it up off of the surface you're cooking on, and that allows the coals to sit comfortably underneath without toppling or lopsiding your Dutch oven. Well, let's pull off this lid here. We'll use our lid lift. Lift it up right there. Oh, what do we have inside? Well, hmm. It looks like uh, the typical Scout meal. Uh, this one happens to be baked beans, and uh, as often happens, our patrol did not eat all of the food, but that's okay. And this can be the same situation with chili, or maybe spaghetti sauce, stews. Um, it's particularly important that uh, we pay attention if we use anything tomato-based. Now the first step in getting our Dutch oven clean, of course, is having a properly prepared Dutch oven. Well, when we're all done, we will have a properly prepared Dutch oven that will be ready for the next time. So we didn't see it properly prepared, but I assure you before this meal went in, it was properly prepared. So that's the first step, a properly prepared Dutch oven. It's in good shape, it's in good repair, it's properly oiled. Well, we're done eating, so we're going to scrape out and clean out everything. It's important that we scrape and clean out everything we can so that we're not dealing with it in the cleaning process. Now it's important to have some place to put this and it goes in the trash. It doesn't go on the ground, it doesn't go in with our cleaning water, it doesn't go in the sump. All of our leftover food, if we're not actually going to eat it, gets properly disposed of in the trash in accordance with the guidelines that are used at the camp location, the park, or wherever you happen to be. So after we get all of our leftovers out, we're going to have a Dutch oven that looks pretty good. And we got everything out of it. That's probably as good as we're going to get at the moment. Now you notice it's still pretty messy. That's that's okay. Scouts are messy, but scouts will clean it up because a scout is clean. Now it helps at this point if you still have coals. You can simply pour water in it, put the lid back on, and the coals will heat the water inside. For our purposes here today, we don't have coals under our Dutch oven, and we're going to heat some water separately and then add it to the Dutch oven. 
So we've given our cast iron uh, Dutch oven a pretty good scraping. Um, some may choose to use something like this, a rubber scraper. It's got a uh, rubbery side. It's got a harder nylon side. They might do some additional scraping. Um, we're not going to do that with this particular project, but if you have one, um, sometimes it does come in handy. Now anytime we're cleaning our cast iron, it is always best to still clean it while it's warm. Um, this happened to have been cold, but for our purposes, we'll presume that uh, we had a nice warm Dutch oven. We still had the coals because we just wrapped up our meal, and uh, I went ahead and heated it up uh, for our purposes. I also heated, on a camp stove, just some water. So we're going to add some hot water to that, maybe about half a liter, uh, maybe a little bit more, and you notice it's going to uh, do a little work for us. We're going to place the lid back on and just let that steep a little bit. It will uh, sit there for a few minutes, we'll come back to it, and the things that uh, are left inside will come off much, much easier. We'll be back to that in just a moment. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we have. We'll take the lid off and set it on top of the lid rest, and we're going to use the same spoon we scraped out with. Maybe it's the same one we cooked and served with because it'll need to be cleaned too. So we're going to start by simply using this water in our Dutch oven to get most of that debris off. See where most of this is coming off rather easily. We'll continue this process until we have it mostly clean, at which time we will dump this water and start with some fresh water and we'll pull out our green scrubby. So I'm going to work on this just another moment. I will dump it and then I'll come back and we'll start with the green scrubby. Well, that's not too bad. After our first scraping with just the spoon, you can see that uh, it is substantially cleaner than it was. And I don't know if you can see it, but we still have enough heat there that uh, there's a little steam rising off of it. But let's go ahead and add a little bit of hot water back to that. Uh, again, we had some off to the side that we heated on our camp stove. We'll add some to that. Not a whole lot, but we do need enough in there to work with. And of course, the green scrubby. So we want to make sure that this water isn't so hot that it's going to hurt us. You want it as warm as you can stand to work with. If it's too warm, well, what do we do? We'll just add some cool water. At this point, I think this is okay. Um, you know, your tolerance for warm water is your own. If it's too warm, add some cold water. If you can handle it a little bit warmer, we'll do so. But of course, we want to make sure we're handling things safely at all times so that we don't cause ourselves any harm or any burns. And once again you can see this is coming off fairly easy. And remember I said earlier that the key, the first step in cleaning a Dutch oven is having it properly prepared before you actually cook. So that's what's making this job easy, is that we spent a lot of time making sure it was properly cleaned after its last use, and then we put it away in good shape. So it's coming out pretty good. Um, I want to make sure that we pay special attention to the lip, the edge, where the lid seals. Lots of times as we're checking or as we're serving, we get things along that lip. And if you don't get it properly cleaned, it tends to build up and it can be a detriment to the seal on your Dutch oven or on your skillet if the skillet has a lid. So I'm thinking this is just in just a couple of moments looking particularly good. Now remember we talked about 
tomato based things. So if you've made a lasagna or some chili or some spaghetti and you've used tomato sauce, tomatoes are acidic and acid is not nice to your cast iron so it's going to be extra important that we scrub all of the remnants of our chili, our spaghetti, or our lasagna off of our Dutch oven. I think we've probably done a good job with scrubbing this. I'm going to pause for a moment. I'm going to go dump this in our sump and bring it back and we'll take a look at it. Well, what do you think? Let's get down in there and look real close. You can see the water is beating up nicely and that is mostly due to the fact that it was well set and seasoned before it was used. So what we want to do is make sure we maintain that level of season. Um, and seasoning is actually a coating of oil that's baked into the surface of the cast iron. So when we talk about seasoning, that's what we're talking about. And it is possible to uh, damage the seasoning. It is possible to get the Dutch oven too hot. Oftentimes, if we put it in a campfire, um, the Dutch oven will be fine, but it can damage the seasoning, in which case we need to pan spend extra time and attention to bringing it back. Now, I'm going to use just a regular paper towel, and I'm going to dry this up. And look at your paper towel. If you're still seeing some dirt, it might mean that we need to clean a little bit more. It could, as I suspect is the case here, simply mean that we have excess oil buildup. I happened to notice down here that instead of being black, it's brownish. Brownish tends not to be oil. Black tends to be oil. So the oil is fine, but if you look after I've dried it, you can see there's still some food remnants in the bottom of our Dutch oven. It's important we get that out. We don't want to leave that. You might be tempted to, but let's get that out of there. Let's go ahead and scrub on that some more. And sometimes, just with scrubbing, you can remove some of the seasoning. And that's not a problem as long as, once again, we pay special attention to re-seasoning our cast iron. So I'm just giving that bottom another good scrub. We do not want baked on food remnants. And while I'm at it, I'm just gonna come up the sides again since I'm in here. And like I said, I really believe what we had on the side was just oil remnants. It was black. And the brown we had in the bottom was from our dinner. That was from our beans that we cooked. So pay attention to what you're cleaning and you'll be able to help determine the health of your cast iron. In fact, I can tell just through that water that that looks like it's a lot cleaner. I just didn't scrub it enough the last time. Once again, I'm going to go dump this in the sump and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I think uh, we've got it clean. Remember I told you with the paper towels we were going to generate some trash? Well, let's put it in the trash. Let's not leave that around. The white regular paper towels, I do tend to like for drying, just for drying. Um, interesting, we're still getting quite a bit of buildup off the bottom. You notice the sides are really largely clean, but when I go across that bottom, I'm getting more. So we could certainly scrub this some more, and I may give it another run, just for my own purposes, before we go into the oiling process. Now, this Dutch oven looks like it's in really good shape. So, uh, depending upon your camp situation, this may be sufficient if you're just going to throw another pot of chili in it later today. But for our purposes, since we're going to concentrate on long-term care, long-term storage, I'm going to give this thing another round and make sure it's really nice and clean before we go on to the next step, which will be drying and oiling. So I'm going to let you take a break, and as soon as I come back, we'll have this thing ready to oil. I'll give it another good scrubbing. Well, okay, we've scrubbed this Dutch oven again, and uh, the last time we saw this, there was still a little bit of material, some leftover food in the bottom. And as we take a closer look, we'll see that uh, it's clean, 
but you'll also notice that you're seeing some lighter specks. You're also seeing over here on the side some areas that don't look as uniformly black as they used to. Well, that's okay, but what that is is we have scrubbed sufficiently and consistently enough that we've actually begun to remove a little bit of the seasoning. The seasoning, remember, is the uh, oil coating that has been baked into the surface of your Dutch oven. And it's normal for some of that to come off, particularly if we are cooking some of those acid tomato-based uh, dishes we talked about before. You'll also notice that when I uh, scrubbed it up, I dried it out really well, that's important. And I took the uh, time to also scrub the underside of the lid. So the lid tends to be uh, a little bit overlooked and we want to make sure that we do not overlook the lid. This particular uh, lid does need a little bit more attention. I'm not going to give it to it right now, but if you look along here, uh, the lip, remember we talked about the lip where the lid and the Dutch oven meet, there's some built up food. Um, I scrubbed quite a bit of it off, but there's still more to do. And there's even more here. And some of that looks like it's been there for a while. Uh, but that's okay too. The lid is often overlooked because it uh, doesn't get direct food on it unless we are splashing or we drag something across the edge of the Dutch oven while we're serving or adding ingredients. But in both instances here, both the lid and the Dutch oven are clean, they are dry, and they are warm. <clears throat> Being warm is really kind of critical to the oiling process. If we're working in cold weather, it's always beneficial to take our, our cast iron and make sure it is warm. Put it back on the coals, warm it up. Um, even if you're putting it on a camp stove just to warm it up, it's very difficult to completely oil a cold piece of cast iron. So this, this is warm. In fact, to make sure it was amply warm, I went ahead and put it on my gas grill and heated it up a little bit. So it's still warm. I can put my hand on it without uh, being uncomfortable. I'm not burning myself, but it is certainly warm to the touch. So our next step is to oil our cast iron. And remember the oil bottle we had before, just a simple Nalgene. Um, I'm going to pour about a half dollar size drop of oil in there and it should run. You see that? With our warm Dutch oven, it's going to be much easier to spread. We can always add more, but it's difficult to, uh, to take it out. So I've put it in, I've let it run. And remember we talked before, I like the brown paper towels for oiling because they leave less lint in our cast iron. So I'm just simply gonna reach in and I'm gonna start smearing that all over. We wanna move that across all of our surfaces and coat it nice and evenly. We're gonna come up the walls. And if for any reason you feel like you don't have enough oil, you can always add a little bit more. But remember, we're not saturating. All we're doing is coating. It's a coating to protect it. In fact, sometimes well-intended people while they're cleaning just might get so much oil in there that it pools. Especially if you're oiling a cold piece of cast iron, that oil may not spread. It may not get thin enough to spread easily. And when that happens, it can build up and when it builds up, it settles into the bottom. And you don't want it to settle in the bottom because then it gets rancid and it becomes a nasty blob you have to deal with later. All right, you notice this lip. We keep coming back to the lip. We did it during the cleaning process and we're doing it during the oiling process. We want to make sure that this lip is amply covered. What do you think? I think the inside of our Dutch oven really is looking pretty snazzy. I'm going to take this same oily paper towel here and I'm going to move over to the lid. And we're going to give that lid a quick once over. Uh, again, spending a little bit of extra attention to that lid. It's really this simple. Warm iron, a little bit of cooking oil. It could be vegetable oil. It can be canola oil. It can be corn oil. It can be um, sunflower oil. It could be any vegetable oil that works well for you that you have on hand. Uh, be mindful if you're using some oils that some people in your unit or in your patrol might have some food allergies. So you want to pay attention to that. Um, you know, we might be tempted to use 
Uh, peanut oil, well, peanut oil is perfectly fine, except for those who have allergies. We want to be sensitive to that. And there's enough other good alternatives. So you noticed we've oiled it up. It's looking beautiful and bright. And our paper towel is not picking up any black residue, any food left over, anything like that. It's just good brown paper towel. There's no lids being left. Everything is nice and oily, both our lid and our Dutch oven. So I think we've done a great job here. So the next step in this is to take another brown paper towel. This is one I've already torn, and I'm going to simply take it back in and wipe over all my surfaces again. The goal this time is to remove any excess oil. I don't want so much oil that it all ends up pooling down in the bottom. Dutch oven's in good shape. You're simply getting the excess oil off. And you know, even though it's warm, and even though I didn't put very much in there, you can still see by the uh, look of that paper towel how much excess oil was still in there. And um, you wanna get that out of there. Wow, I think we've done a great job of cleaning this up. I would be proud to cook a meal in this with uh, any of you patrol members out there and uh, in fact hand it off to you to come up with your best chili recipe. Um, so we're clean, we're oiled, we're in good shape, we're warm. Finally, before we put it away, we're gonna do one more thing and this is kind of critical. Again, I have brown paper towels and I'm gonna fold them up in something of a long piece. I'm then going to fold them so they're a little smaller. And I'm going to take it and crimp it right over the top of the lip of that Dutch oven. Right? See that? Anything with a lid, we want to have it so that we have this paper towel on the lip. We're going to do one on the other side too. And in fact, I'm going to take the one that I used the oil because it's already in a nice condition. An oily paper towel, as long as it's clean, is perfectly fine for what we're doing here. So what I'm going to do here is put it on the other side. And there's a reason we do this. We put the paper towels on the edge, one on each side, and it has to be thick enough that there's some substance to it. We don't want just a thin layer. We want a paper towel on each side so that when I place the lid on top, it allows the Dutch oven to have a little gap there and it can breathe. It lets just enough air through that this Dutch oven now will breathe. It also prevents the lid from sticking to the base. If you leave this in storage in your troop trailer or in your storage unit for any length of time, it's always possible that the lid would actually stick to the Dutch oven. I'm sure some of you have had that experience before. But by placing the paper towels in there, we now have a Dutch oven that can breathe and the lid won't stick. So we've got our Dutch oven clean. I think we're ready to take it on our next camp out. We'll add it back to the quartermaster's box so that uh, it's ready to go the next round. We're gonna take a break for just a moment and then I'm gonna come back and show you the next step in your cast iron care. We'll talk about a Dutch oven that maybe could benefit from some recovery. And in fact, we'll use this same one because if you look at the lid, it has a little bit of surface rust and of course, it's been uh, covered with coals many, many times. We'll be right back. We're back with our Dutch oven lid uh, for the recovery portion of our care and use of cast iron. And uh, although it's not horrible shape, this lid does have some surface rust. And honestly, uh, I have no reason to believe that any of this is due to uh, failure to maintain it. In fact, uh, I believe it's solely due to the fact that we use coals on top of it, and that of course um, creates heating and then cooling, heating and cooling, and that can cause some surface rust on our iron. But nonetheless, uh, we're gonna clean this up a little bit, and it's the same process that we would use for any piece of cast iron that we find that has developed some surface rust or has maybe had food left in it and it's pitted the surface. Any sort of cast iron that uh, needs to be cleaned up can be done with the same process. We'll use a green scrubby, that'll be our last step. But before that, I like to use a simple wire brush. This one happens to be a stainless steel brush. You may use one that's brass. Uh, it really doesn't matter. But what we're gonna do here is begin the process 
of simply cleaning it up. And this will take a little bit of time, but you can already begin to see a difference just in that one spot. So we're going to take all of that surface rust off. A wire brush is an amazing tool. Uh, some people might want to use a brush on a cordless drill or cordless screwdriver. You could certainly do that. Uh, we don't always recommend scouts use the power tools, but if that works for you, you can do that. Some people might choose to use steel wool. Steel wool is a great tool, but if you're using steel wool, we do suggest you use the one without soap in it. Brillo pads are steel wool, but they have soap in them. And soap we really want to avoid using on our cast iron unless it's absolutely necessary because the soap will also contribute to removing the oil and removing our uh, baked on seasoning finish. So this is going to take a little time. Um, I'm going to pause. I'm going to clean this up really good and uh, I'll come back and show you what it looks like after we've scrubbed it down. See you in a few minutes. Okay, so uh, we've spent a few minutes uh, hitting this with the wire brush and I paid special attention to the edges along here. We had some loose material. You saw it beginning to flake. Um, there was some debris building up and we've removed all of the loose material. That's really our goal here. We don't want anything that is going to flake or fall off um, or be an issue for us. So that was our goal, not necessarily to remove every bit of surface rust, but anything that was loose or looked like it could become loose in a short period of time. We wanna leave everything intact that's uh, still uh, there and is uh, still in, in good shape. Um, but uh, we also didn't want to scrub it so much and uh, brush it so much that we removed all of the previous seasoning. Some of these dark areas are actually old seasoning that's still in reasonably good shape. Then the lighter areas are where we had rust, where we removed all of the surface material that was easily coming off, and uh, that's why we see the differences in the color. Our next step here is going to be to oil it, and we will oil it just a little bit heavier than what we did for the underside of the lid and the interior of our Dutch oven. So we're going to oil it and uh, then we're going to give you the final step in the recovery. So first and foremost, clean. You want it clean. You want to remove with uh, steel wool or a wire brush any material that's loose or flaking or built up and then you want to re-oil it. So I'm going to oil this in the same fashion we did our Dutch oven and let me get my oil out here. All right, we'll just pour a little bit on, and as I said, we might leave this on a little bit heavier than what we did on the base. Okay, I'm gonna spread it around. And while we're doing this, we're also gonna be thinking about the actual seasoning. We need heat, and this is difficult to do in the field when you're on a camp out or when you're at summer camp because what we need to do next is heat this cast iron. We need to get it nice and hot and let it bake. The baking process is what literally bakes the oil into the surface of the cast iron. And that's how we get our nice seasoned coating. Um, it gives you that uniform black finish that cast iron is so famous for, especially if you use it a lot, it builds up a nice black Patina, my favorite skillet on the stove in my kitchen here at home, is used almost every single morning for breakfast. I've been cooking breakfast uh, for my three sons uh, since they were very little, uh, two of which are now out of the house, so I've been using it a long time. And I bought it new, and it started out as a piece of plain cast iron, and now it's probably one of the most beautiful pieces of cast iron I own. So we see the oil going everywhere. Looking good. We got it oiled up nice and uniform. I am not going to come in here with a dry paper towel and wipe anything off. I'm not going to do it because remember, we want that coating of oil on there. So I have a oiled lid and I am now going to place this lid on my gas grill. Remember I said it's tough to do this in the field? Well, it's hard to have an oven in the field. I know we do box ovens and that sort of thing, but this requires either a grill or an oven at home. I like the grill because I can leave it outside and not have the smell in the house. So let's go over here to my grill. I've already got it running. I've got it up to almost 600 degrees. 
you want this between 550 and 6. It's a good spot to be. And what we're going to do is actually place the cast iron in the grill. We're going to take that lid and I'm going to set it. I'm actually going to invert it. Why do we invert it? Well, we invert it so that if any oil runs or drips, it does not pool in the top. That's simple. Got a lid in there. We're going to close that up and we're going to let that sit probably a good 40 to 50 minutes. And uh, when we're done, we'll have uh, another beautiful piece of cast iron. I'm also going to add to that our Dutch oven. Remember the one we were working on earlier? Um, I'm going to oil up the outside of it. And as long as I'm seasoning the lid, I might as well uh, give this thing another bake too, just to make it extra special and nice. So I'm going to get that oiled up. I'll throw it in and then we'll be back to see the finished product. Stay tuned. So now we are done baking our Dutch oven and lid. And I have to point out here, you'll notice there's a little bit of a variation in the finish here. Um, although it's uniformly black, you'll see this one area that's a little different. And that's because when I went back in, in fact, you can still see a couple of my fingerprints from my glove where I flipped it over and put it on the grill. And I tried to touch that back up, but you certainly get the idea. Remember what that lid looked like before? Well, now it's a very nice uniformly black uh, baked in uh, finished coating. And that's what we call the seasoning. And of course, the inside of our Dutch oven looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's just beginning to sprinkle a little bit out here, which is why I had that cover on there, but you can see a couple of water droplets in there. It's just gorgeous. I love the look of cast iron. This looks almost brand new. I'm going to run around the outside here a little bit. You can see how uniform the finish is. And I did re-oil the exterior so that when we baked it, it came out really nice. You can do the same thing um, with your cast iron. It's not very difficult. This has been fully seasoned and we've put the paper towels in place. It is ready for storage and to go back in service. So what do you think? Is this something you think that you and your fellow scouts can make happen? I certainly think it's possible. All right. Well, um, I will uh, leave you for now. I'll come back with just a quick follow-up and uh, wish you happy camping. See you soon. Well, there you have it. I hope this information was useful and helpful, taking care of and cleaning and even recovering your favorite cast iron camp cookware. My name is Mr. Bill Hafler, Troop 303, South Hadley, Massachusetts, and I look forward to seeing you cooking on the trail and in the woods. Be well.